hi everyone welcome to code kamka youtube channel i hope everybody are doing good in the last video we have discussed about what is mean by ml flow and what all uses of ml flow in machine learning life cycle one what all advantages with ml flow and how it is utilized uh, for uh, data scientists uh, machine learning engineers and even uh, machine learning operation engineers and what all uses are there and how beautifully it is resolving the issues uh, into the machine learning life cycle and today's video we'll be discussing about how to install ml flow into different environment so today we are going to discuss about two installation methods one is local installation which is in your local laptop or desktop and second one which is a remote server it can be any cloud provider it can be azure aws gcp and we will be discussing about kubernetes uh, deployment in the future so first we'll see how to install ml flow into your local installation which means local laptop for that you should have a python install so so first i'll show you how to install uh, ml flow into your local machine and later i'll show you how you can install into your remote so let's see like this is my local laptop and i'm going to install ml flow on my local laptop so for that i'm going to check what is the python version uh python iphone iphone version is the command to check the version of my python so currently i have python 3.12.2 and this is my python version and i've got a few commands like you know this is the command like where you can create the virtual environment and later you can activate it and you can install whatever uh, packages you need so i'm going to copy this command and i paste over into my uh, cli and i'll add all this command into this uh, video description and you can go and copy it and you can paste it in your local environment or remote and you can install it so i'm going to create a virtual environment in the name of mlflow and it will get created so yeah it has created so i'll activate my virtual environment this is the command to activate it Now it has been activated and whatever packages I will be installing, it will be on this particular virtual environment. So for that, I'm going to call the uh, Python package manager and install into MLflow here. So I'm going to copy this command and I'll paste here. So pip install MLflow is a command to install the respective packages of MLflow. So once I click enter, so it will uh, get all the packages related to MLflow and it will get installed into the respected uh, virtual environment, in our case, MLflow. So it's very simple like you know here i'm using virtual visual studio code or you can use any uh, like you know code editor it can be pycharm it can be a basic cmd or it can be powershell you can use any uh, you know cli to perform this action there is no restrictions since i have been using mlflow uh, oh sorry i have been using uh, visual studio code long that's why i'm comfortable to use it but it's not restricted you can use any uh, cli to install mlflow I'm just zooming and zooming out. So the installation process may take time based on your internet speed and the uh, bandwidth. So since it is going to take some time, I will pause the video and we'll come back. Okay, so it has been installed. Um, oh, it has not been taken more than a minute. So it's purely depend on your internet speed. So now we have installed um, with our Python package manager, pip3, and we have installed MLflow. And now we are going to use MLflow UI to up and running your MLflow server in your local machine. So I'm going to use this command, MLflow UI. If I press enter, so my MLflow will be up and running on respected um local host with the port number 5000 and if you if this respected port number has been registered uh, with any other services what you can you can you know as any other uh, port number with it so if you see this one like uh, it's a waitress service is running at the 127.0.0.1 which is my local host server 
and 5000 port i have copied it i'll go to my uh, browser so i'll paste here if i press enter so it has been installed successfully and it has been running on with the version of 2.17.0 and this is how you can install mlflow into a local machine so i forgot to tell you like you know, if you want to install uh, any packages with a python package manager you should install pip uh, in your local and i'll add the documentation for pip also and installation of python so you can follow the documentation you can you know install in your local machine so this is a simple way uh, you can follow very three to four commands that you can install into your local machine and you can use it but it's very uh, you know dependable which means like you know it is only uh, relays on your local laptop or desktop or a local server and if you want to make any collaboration between the you know developers of de by machine learning developers or any other developers or any machine learning operation engineers to pull the models and injecting all your metrics so it is not suitable for that so that's why what we can do we can install same machine learning uh, i mean mlflow uh, server into any um, remote machine and from there we can access it and we can make a collaboration to any other uh, team member so that is how it is going to be more useful for your team so i hope it is clear for everyone like installing into your local machine if not you can drop your comments in the comment section now i'll jump into uh, aws cloud provider so this is the cloud provider i'm going to use it uh, so prerequisite for uh, you know installation of mlflow and remote server you should have any cloud service provider account in our case it's aws and i'm going to ec2 is elastic computing as a service which is provided by aws so here i can come and i can run uh, instance and later i can install uh, mlflow on top of it so currently i don't have any servers are running on so i'll go and create a new server here i'll go and launch instance and i'll give my instance name as a mlflow and i'll specify the uh, uh, OS image is Ubuntu. I'm going to take the OS image over here. So people called as a IAM, which is a like you know, sorry, AMI, Amazon Machine Image, as a terminology of it. And I'm going to take the T2 micro, and uh, which is a free trial eligibility of correct limit. I don't need to pay for it. So I have the key pair already created. In our case, if you haven't created a new key pair, you can create it from here and you can use that. So I have, I'm going to use the EKS. And uh, here, so it's up to you guys, like you know. There is a best practices going on in the in, in the uh, you know corporate sector in the real world, which means like you, know, you cannot uh, use the public subnets uh, to deploy your machine uh, your MLflow servers. So it should be on private subnet or it, it, it there should be some restrictions like VPN connectivity. Uh, so it's up to you like in you know, how uh, securely can access your servers by installation of MLflow. And in this video, I'm going to show you like, you know, you know, without security and all, like not making complicated, but in real time, like, you know, you, you have to deploy, uh, you have to run this MLflow server in very secure manner. Otherwise, there are high chances that you can um, hack by somebody or take an advantage of all your code inside of your MLflow. So that is why, like I've just given a quick heads up, like, you know, I'm going to use a default uh, security group and everything. I'm not going to specify anything over here. So I'm going to use the alert SSH to, you know, for that. And then I'm going to use the HTTP for this, like traffic from anywhere in the internet. And if you want to make any restrictions, you can use the existing security groups and you can create the uh, security group and you can use the VPCs, uh, here this one. You can use your custom VPC, but here I'm using default VPC. You can use your subnets and everything. You can add it. So it's up to your customization how would like to, you know, uh, safely, securely access this MLflow server. But in our case, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to make more complicated. So that's why, like, you know, as a prerequisite, I said, like, you know, you should have um, uh, basic information about the uh, AWS and all. So I'm going to launch the instance. Just very a few click of time to launch your instance. So it is going, going to take some time to launch your instance. It is going to create the security groups and launch uh, initiations and all. So my instance has been launched. So it will take some little bit time to initiate it and we can connect to the uh, instance via web CLI or web console and if you click on this it has been initiated so if I go and connect here so I'm going to connect to that server via my is to instance connect only uh, like you know it has been giving imaging UI for this instead of you know pulling it or connecting from your local or backstorm or putty so we can connect to the web CLI itself
So he's going to initialize the session for this. So it's up to your uh, connection speed, guys. Like, you know, I think uh, it has not been initiated yet. Let me go and see the instance levels. So now our, I think it's still in the initiation, initialization phase. That's why it is taking time to connect it. So once it is up and running, um, it will show you, let me filter it, which is running. So now it is still in the initiation stage. That's why it has not been getting connected to our Cloud Shell or Web uh, CLI. So let's refresh it uh, once it is came into one out of one status check and we can go and connect it. I think here also, yeah, it got connected. Let me refresh it. It still is initiative because uh, I think there is some lag into web uh, console. But if you see this one, so this is our 172.31.37.32. Uh, this is if you go to this one. So this is our private IP address and this is the same one. And you can crash check here. So now what I'll do, I'll change the as a root user. sudo hyphen s, this is my command to switch root user. I'll create my entire screen and I'll update my server, apt update. To collect the latest um, packages from the, in the apt uh, you know, package manager from the Ubuntu, it will collect all it and it will get updated the latest packages. Okay, so my server has been updated. So what I will do is create the screen and I'll go to the documentation I have brought. So we have seen like, you know, what all commands that we need to use to install in the local. And now we are going to install on remote server. So for that, I'm going to install the uh, APT uh, ENV. So I'll go and install it. But before that, like, you know, I'll show you in the cloud shell itself, like, you know, when you are using uh, any Linux server, it will be uh, coming along with the Python. So, sorry. I think I'm going to use a Python 3. Yeah, we have the 3.12.3 .3 as a Python version, which is currently up and running. But it will be coming along with the Ubuntu uh, like operating system itself. You don't need to explicitly install it like the way you're installing to your local machine. Now I'm going to take this command, which is uh, hln one installation with the Python 12 version. I'll go and paste it here. So it will install the uh, packages related to virtual env with the respected uh, version and all. Now it has been installed. I'll clear the screen again and I'll go back to install virtual env, which is uh, uh, creating a virtual env on the name of mlflow. So I'll go and create the virtual env in the name of mlflow. Now the virtual env has been created. I'll go and activate that virtual env, which is a command source mlflow and bin activate. So now it has been activated. Now I'm the inside of my mlflow virtual environment and I'll go and install the package related to my mlflow. So now it is getting pulled the, all the required uh, packages uh, via uh, Python package manager, which is a pip. Yeah. 
So it may take some time to install its respective packages. So I'll pause the video and we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so MLflow has been installed. Now uh, we have installed it. Now we need to assign the port number for this. So I'm going to use this. And first I'll create the screen and I'll paste the command over here. This command will assign the uh, port for allowing to connect with my MLflow. And the rule has been updated here. And what I will do, I'll use MLflow UI host for this. And this is the command I'm going to use it for connecting with my respected uh, port number. And now it is up and running. So what I will do, I'll go and take my uh, public IP address. So if you see, uh, so going to my server, this is my public IP address. I'll copy this. I'll go to browser, I'll paste the IP address along with the port 5000. If I press enter, it should connect if not we need to go and check the security groups did we allow this port number 5000 or not okay so it is not allowing let's go and check into our security groups so we need to go to security and we need to check in inbound so let's go to inbound row and let's edit it for timing we can what we can do like we can allow everybody so what i'll do i will allow all the traffic uh, and from any uh, ipv4 and i'll just save this rule and what i'll do i'll go and i'll refresh this so this time it should work yeah so it's up to your customization, like, you know, how you'd like to allow the respected port number. So, you know, in this, in our case, like, you know, we just need to allow only the 5000 port and we don't need to allow any other port number. So it's up to your customization, up to your security level, how we'd like to allow the port numbers and all, even you may need to uh, change this port number. So it's up to your customization. So this is how you can install MLflow on any uh, remote server. It can be any cloud service provider. It can be AWS, Azure, GCP and all. And you can follow these uh, pretty straightforward commands where you can install it. And this part, like, you know, Kubernetes installation, we'll see in the next upcoming session. So I, would, I hope it is clear for everybody installing MLflow in local and installing MLflow on remote server. In the next coming sessions, we will see, like, you know, how we can connect our MLflow uh, server with our uh, machine learning code and how we can log our metrics uh, while training and evaluation. So that's all for the lecture. Uh, like, you know, we have seen how to install it. And thank you for watching this video. Share it to your friends and family members who are willing to learn MLOps and ML related content. So until then, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.